Now to here in our own backyard, local parents are suing a preschool over claims that their children were sexually abused by an employee. But the Washington Hebrew Congregation's preschool told a D.C. judge waivers that parents signed means that parents can't hold the school at least legally responsible for the sex abuse committed by an employee. The Washington Post was first to report this story, and the parents claim that the school negligently allowed an employee to sexually abuse their children, targeting children ages 2 to 4. The suit says that the school violated D.C. law that requires at least two adults to be in the room with minor children. Now, WHC told the court that they can't be held responsible because the parents signed a waiver. They argue that the waiver means they can be sued only for extreme or intentional conduct, and the school says there's not a shred of evidence that they intended for the abuse to occur. I could be a horrible abusive parent and want to contract for my child to take some nude photos, and the state says no because you have a higher duty as a parent just because there's freedom of contract and you could contract for that yourself. When you're contracting on behalf of a minor, the standard is different. The fundamental legal principle that children cannot protect themselves. And so the law then has shifted that burden to all the adults around them to engage in protective measures that we don't normally ask of citizens, but we do when it comes to child abuse because we recognize children cannot protect themselves. Now, the release that parents signed, it generally does protect the school and its employees, but it wouldn't stop the parents from being able to sue the individual who is accused of sexual abuse in this case. In a statement this week, a spokesperson for WHC said, our motion in no way suggests that parents somehow consented to criminal or intentional acts. The judge will first decide legally whether those waivers can block the parents from suing. If not, the trial is scheduled to begin March 2023. A San Francisco woman is suing the city and its police department. The woman, who we'll call Jane Doe, says authorities used her DNA from a rape kit where she was the victim to peg her as a suspect in a burglary completely unrelated to the rape case. Her attorneys say what happened to her was an unconstitutional invasion of privacy. The last thing a survivor is thinking that this will one day come back and be used against me. Jane Doe came to the police looking for help. She came to the police looking for them to do right by her. And instead, the police betrayed her. Jane Doe claims her DNA was collected in 2016 while police were investigating her sexual assault. It was later stored in a database without her knowledge or permission. Then she claims five years later, police used the DNA sample to arrest her for burglary. The charges against her were eventually dropped. Her lawsuit alleges her DNA was tested against crime scene DNA in hundreds, if not thousands, of cases and says she was re-victimized by the whole ordeal. You put a lot of trust in the people in the system to make yourself vulnerable like that. Do you feel like they lived up to their end of their bargain? Absolutely not. Absolutely not. The opposite. They betrayed my trust even more, and it just made me relive the whole situation. San Francisco's police chief said he has made sure no rape kits are ever used again to identify suspects. The city's attorney's office responded to the lawsuit with this statement, quote, the city is committed to ensuring all victims of crime feel comfortable reporting issues to law enforcement and has taken steps to safeguard victim information. Once we're served, we will review the complaint and respond appropriately.